Hi everybody, it's Brandy. I'm back again today. It is Monday and it's supposed to be Make Along Monday. Something I haven't quite figured out yet how to do is because I'm working with my iPad. I don't really know how to get that. The current tripod that I have only lets me film horizontally, I guess. I'm not sure how to explain that. I can't bend my tripod to get an above head view going down. Let's put it that way. So I'm just going to do my best to stick with simple patterns. If you don't know how to crochet, there are obviously a plethora of videos that are going to show it up, up close, tight. You're going to be able to see you know everything that you need to to learn to crochet but if you already know how to crochet you should be able to follow along with this this is a super simple pattern I was thinking about what I wanted to start off with and I thought you know what this is what I need to start off with because it's easy it is beginner level it is just double crochets chain spaces easy 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 and you can really modify this and make it your own if you've ever made a triangle shawl in your life you can make this and as a matter of fact you can choose any triangle shawl pattern that you want that's already on YouTube and make this using that pattern so this is less of a pattern and more of just a recipe for you so we're gonna make these amazing bandanas today I love these things I have been making them like nobody's business I wear them all summer long with my hair down with my hair up I, I just I have naturally curly hair it's been extremely humid here my hair just looks like a big poof ball and this is just one way that I can kind of look cute show off some of my makes and um, hide my frizzy hair at the same time um, I've got a couple here that I've made that I was going to show you guys this one as you can see it is just this is a traditional granny I generally just stick with the granny because it's fast it's easy you can make one of these up in about 30 minutes um, this is using fingering weight yarn Weasley's coming to visit us um, this is using fingering weight yarn I prefer fingering weight for these because it gives it a lot of drape and goodness I've been using um, just a traditional you can use any sock yarn now you can use any weight yarn you want I just like the fingering weight because of the way it goes on my head it's not like bulky or stiff or feeling um, inflexible or anything this is really nice so this is a Madeline Tosh fingering weight yarn that I got at some, some point and I don't know if you can see but it has a really pretty Stellina glitters going through it and then I just do a little um, there's several ways to do this cord at the end but that way you can just tie it at the back and I also made this one and this one I made because it matches my hexagram cardi which I put a little short up just showing that process I finished it off I'm going to um, have it in this Friday's video for the FO's finished objects of the week because that is now completed and I'll show it in all of its full glory I'm so in love with it I decided to um, put a little button on mine oh wow that's my microphone I'm so sorry guys I'm so bad about that okay anyways this matches my hexagram cardi or hexagon cardi I don't want to call it a hexagram although it's a hexagon granny cardigan hexagram a hexagram cardi anyway this matches that so this is a fingering weight it is the Hobby Lobby's hand dyed fingering weight that they have and this color is called I believe it's called velvet cardinal and it is so beautiful I love it it's black it's red but it's got little flecks of black running through it very very pretty so what I found with these, um, any pattern that's going to give you a triangular shawl, not an asymmetrical triangle, that will not work. You're going to be able to get 
um, you're going to be able to use any pattern really for this. And the most simplest way is to go on and get a slip knot on the hook if you just want to do a simple granny version. Chain four. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, we're going right into that very first chain. We're going to do two more double crochets. There's one double crochet and two double crochets. Now we're going to do our center spine, so we're just going to chain one. Yarn over, right back into that same first stitch, we're going to do three double crochets. So there's one. Two and three. All right, so this is what you're left with. Just one little tiny triangle at this moment. Not a lot going on. What I will tell you that I have found that seems to be a good size for just about any person, if you are using a fingering weight yarn, and I'm using a G hook, which is kind of a bigger hook, um, for a fingering weight, but we don't want this to be real tight. So what I have found is that this would be considered one row. 15 rows seems to be about perfect. Now, I'm going to set that down for a moment. This is quite easy for you guys to adjust. This is a completely easy, like I said, this isn't a pattern. This is a recipe. So this is 15 rows. And the way that you can count your rows is you know that we started at the very center and the way that this is constructed is you're going to keep going back and forth in a V-like motion. So I do 15 rounds. And then I like to go around my edges, this top edge, with a couple of rows of either single or half double crochet. And then I attach my yarn to each end. And you can chain a number. I do about 50 and you can just come back and do a single crochet back down this chain just to give it a little more sturdiness. Like I said, it's completely adjustable, but at 15 rounds, if I put this on my head, it gives me, you do not want these to be touching at the back of your head because yarn stretches over time. We want to have a few inches when we wrap that around our head where we're going to be able to pull that tight or loosen it and what have you. We want to have some room. We don't want it to already be touching because then when it stretches out, it's just going to be falling off all the time. So for me, 15 rows is just about perfect. Okay, so we have created our very first row. Easy peasy. What we're going to do is we're going to chain four. And that counts as a single crochet I'm, I'm sorry, a double crochet and a chain one space. Actually, that's not what I wanted to do. Erase that. We're chaining three. I don't know what I thought for a minute, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. Chain three and turn your work into the same stitch that the chain three came, came out of. We are going to do two more double crochets. So one and two. That chain three counts as a stitch. It counts as your first double crochet. Split my yarn. All right. Some people chain between their granny clusters. I don't. The only place I place chains in my granny stitch, and this is across any project I pretty much ever do, the only place I add chains is in the center corner. As that would be referred to. So we've done three in the very base. We're going to skip those three double crochets and go right into the center and we're going to create our next center. So we're going to yarn over. We're going to place three double crochets. One, two, and three. We're going to chain one and right back into that same space we're going to do three more double crochets so one two and three all right 
Now we're going to look at this last bit and we have one double crochet, two double crochets, and then we have our chain three space. We are going to go right into the third chain of that chain three space. We're going to yarn over and we are going to place three double crochets. So there's one, two, and three. And now we have created our second row. We have a cluster on each end and our center cluster. As you guys will expect, we're going to increase at the beginning of each row, at the end of each row, and in the center. And that's going to grow our bandana <laughs> into a nice triangular shape. And this would be the same as you would do for a traditional granny stitch shawl. Obviously, you would just continue on until it was much bigger. So this is a one row repeat. I love making these. Like I said, I can make one of these up in about 30 or 45 minutes. It doesn't take any time at all. It's an easy, mindless knit. You can watch YouTube and TV and you can talk to people and do everything. We are just simply going to do the same thing again. We have our, we are at the end of this row. We are going to chain three. We are going to turn our work. And in the very first stitch, we are going to place two more double crochets right in that stitch that our chain is coming out of. Two more double crochets. We're going to skip those double crochets and go right into the space in between those clusters and we're going to place three double crochets. All right skipping the next three double crochets and we're going to go right into the center space at the top and create another corner and we do that by placing three double crochets a chain one and right back into the same space three more double crochets split my yarn again this yarn has been through it. I don't even recall. I think it's a Madeline Tosh, but I could be wrong on that. It definitely came in like my yarn crate or one of my yarn club memberships at some point in time. So we've created our top corner. We're going to skip the next three double crochets and we're going to go right into the space between those two clusters and do three double crochets. And last but not least, we have one, two double crochets in our chain three. We're gonna go right into the top of that chain three and place three double crochets once again. This is very odd to hold my hands up in this position. Like I said, my channel is new as we can probably notice and I've never created content like this before. I watch a lot of it. I've learned so much from this community and I really wanted to contribute as well. Um, but at some point here in the near future, I will have a downward facing so you can see what my hands are doing. That is why I wanted to start with something simple like this. Um, and like I said, if you're very, if you're brand new, to crochet there are so many good channels on here um, where you can learn everything and see the stitches up close people that are far beyond my skill at videoing things but I still want to help I still want to play a little bit too guys so now we have this situation going on we have increased again one more time I will show you guys this is a one row repeat but I'll go through it one more time with you on this next row and like I said Right now, we have three rows. You can look, you can count those by looking at your center. We have one, two, and our very first one, three. So we've got three rows. And like I said, I like to do about 15. But maybe once you get to about 12 or so, start placing it on your head. And like I said, you want to leave probably anywhere from two to three inches. 
so that you can be able, as that stretches, you want to be able to pull those strings tighter around your head. And if these guys are touching already, you have nowhere to go from there. So leave a couple two or three inch gap when you place it. See mine ends here and there. So I've got a good three inches that I'm, I'm terrible with measurements. I'm sorry guys. I've got a good chunk of space where I can be able to tighten that as this stretches over time and what have you. And I do use, um, because I use sock yarn, um, I stay away from, you know, 100% wool. I'm usually going with um, uh, superwash merino with some nylon in it. Any kind of yarn that you can wash, I would recommend. You can do. I just, I'm afraid with it being on your head and getting a lot of movement and you're probably going to want to wash it. I just think something washable machine washable would be more convenient cotton would probably work really good i just don't love working with cotton there's a few cottons i found that are okay cotton would probably be great for this project um but yeah you can just do what you want do what you like because you really can't mess up it's your project you you make it yourself the way that you like it so we are at the end of that row we're gonna go and do our fourth row now. So we are going to chain up three, one, two, three, turn our work right back into the base of where that chain three is coming out, placing two more double crochets, one and two. I don't chain, you can if you wish. We're skipping over the three double crochets we're going right into that space with three double crochets. One, two, three. Skipping over the three double crochets, going into the next space with three double crochets. One, two, and three and now skipping over those next three double crochets we're coming into our center corner within that space we're going to place three double crochets a chain one and three double crochets so there's two here's three chain one and one two and three again. The corner is complete. We skip over the next three double crochets and into the space we place three double crochets. One, two, three. Skipping over the next three double crochets, we're going into that last space there and placing three double crochets. One, two and three and now skipping those first two double crochets and going into the top of the chain three turning space we will place three double crochets all right guys so now we have four rows complete. One, two, three, and four. Anywhere 12 to 15, maybe 16, depending on the size of your noggin. Continue in that fashion. Like I said, once you get to the end, you could just be finished. You could just attach some chains on each side for your string. Or I always like to reinforce this top edge because it's a little lumpy and bumpy this edge stays nice but this edge i like to do a row or two of singles or half double crochets just to get it really nice and straight and good looking and those are half doubles i did along the top edge i only do it along the top edge you could do what you want i may this time even put like a pico edge around the bottom of my 
triangle just for something different. Like I said, you can customize these. They don't have to be granny stitch. Any triangle shawl that you find can be made little and attach to, you know, um, chains. I like to reinforce, I don't like to just do chains. I like to chain and then come back with a single crochet just to kind of give it more strength and durability. But like I say, take any, and, and it's really cute. If you make yourself a really cute shawl, you can make yourself a matching headband, bandana thingy. And you can cover up, if you have frizzy hair like me, you can cover it up. But I love these things. I just think they're cute and it's great, 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 great for busting through scrap yarn where you don't have enough to really do. I mean, you could do a scrappy project with lots of ends to weave in, I suppose. But I love making these and I think they make great gifts and I think they're super fun. So let me know what you guys make if you um, enjoy this. And I really appreciate you guys watching today. And I, you know, I want to just reiterate that we will get the filming situation done. I have a lot of great ideas and I just need my husband who is the computer person to help me do these things, but he's very busy at work right now. So I'm on my own. Um, come back and check me out through the week. I have more plans. Like I said, Friday, I'll be doing my, um, finished objects in Wednesday. I've have started something new since my last video um, that will be added into my current whips and hopefully I'll finish some more things too we shall see knock on wood anyways thank you guys for joining me I hope you have a great day bye